Hi there, I'm Jun Tan. This presentation explains how to track regime changes in financial markets. Now you may wonder, what exactly is regime change? Why should we care about regime change? In this research, we consider that a regime change is a significant change in the collective trading behavior in the trading market. In other words, it is considered as a result of changes in traders' trading behavior. Why should we care about regime change? One reason is that we want to guard against abnormality. As you may know, traders always attempt to look for regularities in the financial market. If they succeed to do so, they could exploit the regularities as long as they are persist. But regularities in the normal market may not persist when the market changes regime. This could happen following political events. For example, the Euro to British pound market was disrupted by the result of the Brexit vote in 2016. Volatility became extremely high. Trading with strategy for a normal market could become disastrous. Therefore, traders would love to check regime changes. A market maker and a regulator may also benefit from regime change detection. Now the next question would be how to detect regime changes. In this research, we propose a method to detect regime change. This method is built on the concept of directional change. So let me briefly explain what it is. We should just call it BC. BC is an alternative approach to record price movements. Instead of recording the transaction prices at fixed time intervals, as it is done in time series, BC let the data alone decide when to record the transaction. In DC, a data point is recorded when the price has risen or dropped against the current chain by a significant percentage, which is known as the threshold. The magnitude of the threshold is determined by the observer. As an example, suppose an observer use 5% as the threshold, then we look for extreme points from which price rose or drop by 5% or more. The link below explains DC in greater detail. To describe the price movements in DC, we need to introduce a few indicators. First, we let theta be the threshold used in the observation. A DC train begins with an extreme point EPO. It ends when the price reverses at point EPC. Then we have an indicator called total movement or TMV for short to measure the price movement between EPO and EPC. The price difference is EPC minus EPO. The difference di divided by EPO is the percentage change. We get the total movement by dividing the pe percentage by the threshold theta. This allows us to compare TMVs obtained on the different threshold, which is important to our work below. Apart from the TMV, two other indicators are also important to this research. The first one is called T, which measures the time it takes to complete the train. The second one is called R, the return, which is TMV divided by T. In this slide, I will explain how market regimes can be detected under DC. Later, I shall explain 
how this could help us track regime changes continuously. This research is entirely data-driven, so we always start with data. Plus, we summarize transaction prices with chains in DC. For each chain, we can measure the total movement TMV and time T. We can then calculate the return R for each chain. Next, we fit the sequence of R's in all the chains into a hidden Markov model. A hidden Markov model is a way of relating the sequence of observations to a sequence of hidden states. In our case, we want to use the observed sequence of R's to detect the hidden states. We call them the regimes. We then ask the hidden Markov model to classify the chains into one of two regimes. For convenience, we call the regime with lower volatility, regime 1 or the normal regime. And we call the regime with higher volatility, regime 2 or the abnormal regime. This is the method we propose to detect regime change. Now that we can detect market regimes with historical data, we apply the same technique to 10 axes in four different periods. To maintain diversity, we cover the stock market, the commodity market, and the foreign exchange market. We also use daily closing price data as well as minute by minute data. For each exec, we use 10 thresholds to summarize price into chains. Here, we use the hidden Markov model to detect regimes in these 10 markets. Then we plot the regimes onto a T and TMV space. We should remind that we fed the hidden Markov model with the indicator R, and R was made up of T and TMV. This slide shows that for each group of data, the regimes are clearly separable in the T and TMV space. This shows generality across axes and thresholds. Is there any generalities across time and data frequency? The answer is yes, there is. Here. We put all the detected regimes together. There is certainly overlap between normal and abnormal regimes, which is mainly due to the regimes from the commodity market. But the two regimes are by and large separable. This is an important discovery. For the first time, we can now characterize normal and abnormal regimes in the DC indicator space. Equipped with characteristics of the normal and abnormal regimes, we are now in a position to estimate the regime that the current market is in. To do so, we monitor the market by reading the T and TMV values of the current chain. Based on the position of the normal regime, in the T and TMV space, we can compute the probability of the market being in the normal regime. Separately, we can compute the probability of the market being in the abnormal regime. We now have two probabilities, one for the normal regime and one for the abnormal regime. We need an interpretation rule to decide which regime the current market is in. One simple rule is to pick that regime that has higher probability. We call this rule be simple. Another rule is to make it stricter to pick the abnormal regime. This rule, we call it be strict. Acts like be simple, except that the probability of being in the abnormal regime must exist 
a certain threshold. In our experiment, we set this threshold to 0.8. Now we have everything needed to check the market continuously. This is how the current chain occupies a position in the T and TME space. For example, the current market could be at point 0.1. As the chain continues, T increase, the market could move to point 0.2, then point 0.3 in the T and TME space. Suppose a directional change has, has been confirmed. The market has moved to point 0.4 which has a small t, but a relatively high TMV. At this point, the interpretation rule may or may not conclude that the market is in abnormal regime. But even if it doesn't, alarm could still have been raised if the probability of the market being in the abnormal regime is sufficiently high. Next, a short rise or 4 in the price could have brought the market to 0.5. At this point, the interpretation rule may suggest that the market has gone into the abnormal regime. This is how we can check the market regime continuously. To summarize, it is useful to know when the market change regimes, especially when it goes into an abnormal regime, the sooner we find out, the better. This motivates our research. We have proposed a method to detect regime changes in hindsight. With this method, we can characterize normal and abnormal regimes in the DC indicator space. This allows us to check regime changes in the market dynamically. As a proof of concept, we have shown how this can be done with a naive base model. Of course, there is scope for improvement, but the most important point is we have proved that regime change checking is possible with market information currently available. And that's all for today. Thank you so much for listening.